everyone. Today I thought we'd look at panels and door materials in Cabmaster. So here I've got a very simple drawing with just a door cabinet on the left and a shelf on the right. If we come into the drawing properties, you'll notice up here in the job setup we have a door material and we have a panel material. I'll come back to this button here, panel as door. These need a little bit more explanation. So if I come down to my materials advanced manager, we can actually uh, edit other types of materials as well, but I'm just going to start with our just default material. This is everyone's different materials. They can make it become whatever they want it to be. So if we manage these materials, let's go look at a door material. We do also have panels. So what I'm going to pick on is first I'm going to find a material that I know. I know exactly what it's doing at the moment. So I'm going to work from this one here. Now at the moment, the door materials actually have groups. In the past, the panel materials never actually possessed groups, so they only had these unsorted. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on that. So I'm going to take advantage of this particular, uh, where is it again, 16, and I'm going to go to my gunmetal. Okay, um, so this is now material down here is the gunmetal grey. So what I'm now going to use is I'm going to start a new material and I'm going to go with a. 16 millimeter uh, cappuccino I'm going to go with this one now be careful with the name here the name has to be unique but this particular material I'm thinking of comes from Formica so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to call this Formica um, I could put the word for Micra in the name if I needed to, because maybe what if Cappuccino exists in a Laminex or a Polytech or a Prime or a Meltica? Um, what if it exists in one of those other ones? So maybe I might want to put that in the name. I'll just leave it as this for the moment. Uh, let you decide. So the brand there is for Micra. This is more for reporting purposes. The thickness, thickness here is 16. The color is cappuccino. Now in the background there is lots of different colors available. You can add to these if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use something I already know is in here. Oh, so I look in the right spot. Finish, this is where you might put something like uh, gloss, matte, textured, it's more just for wording. It's not necessarily to do with uh, the actual finish of it as a product. It's just to do with the wording for reporting purposes. But I could have also included that in its name. Options. Transparent is not an option for doors. We'll come back against that in the panel section because a panel can become transparent. It gives it a sort of a glassy look, a sort of see-through look. Now, edging on a door is appropriate. You can choose that a door is allowed to be edged or not allowed to be edged. This particular Formica color I'm thinking about is a laminated material, so it is going to require an edging. So I'm going to leave that on. Now, CNC name is to talk about whether or not it's to be cut out with the CNC. If it's turned off, it will not be allowed to be cut by the machine. If it's turned on, it will allow to be allowed to. Now, this name here is very important. This name here is re relevant to the name that makes the doors and the panels join together. So if I have that name exactly the same, and you notice I didn't put the word door or panel when I get to the other part, I'm just calling it cappuccino. In OptiLink, similar purpose, this means the material can come out to a beam saw or not, and also if it needs to have a keyword that identifies it for that purpose. The part number is purely if it has a product code or something like that from a board supplier. So during the reporting stages, we can potentially pull forward the part number that will give you the code for ordering purposes. In the grain section, if the particular material had a grain pattern, I would be turning this on. Uh, if it didn't, I would turn it off. It locks a rotation when it goes to machining for that purpose. In the door styles, we have different styles. You should have something picked here. Don't leave it in a state that says select like that does down there up here. It will cause a problem in the 3D uh, textured environment. 
The typical one is to use a slab edge banded or flat panel, whichever. It's just a flat looking door. In the case of this particular material I'm using, that is the look that I want. But you can go find different other styles, like for example, shaker panel, square framing. Have a browse around and see what you like in there. There's a few different starting points. Style is more to do with uh, whether it's got a particular name of the style, maybe it's got a, a particular a test roll shape, it's got a, a name, you can put that style name in there. It also can assist with the door master export if you're using that product. Pricing I'll pretty much cover in another video, but this is where you can go do the materials price. Okay. So now I'm happy with this particular material as it's set up, I'm going to save it as. Okay. So it's going to automatically save that material. Now quite often when you make a door material, you're going to need an equal panel material to use. So it's very easy to make the panel material right now, looking at exactly this door material. First of all, this name, as I said, has to be unique. So I'm making a unique name. You'll notice this has just changed now to save as. So when I come up to here, I can go to the panel, change it into a panel category. There's pretty much nothing else I really have to change here because this now material is exactly the same, but it's in the panel type. Edging is not appropriate, like it can't not edge, it always has to edge as a panel. Yes, it could be grained, yes, it could go to the beam saw, it could go to the CNC, whatever you're doing. Pricing, it also has its own price. You will notice actually there's a page missing. They do not have styles, they don't have door styles in panels. That's where we come back to our cheeky little friend, the panel as door. Once again, I'll come back to that, I'm holding the thought. So now that I'm happy with this panel material, I'll save it as. So now I've got my matching panel. Now while I'm here, I'm just going to make another Formica color. I'm going to go with uh, this time a color calm gray. As you notice, I'm just carefully changing a few little key elements to make this into what I need it to be. Very important, needs to change. Don't want to machine that at the same time as the other one. That'll be a bit of a problem. Now while I'm here, reverse order, if I've made my panel, I can make my door. So. Same, exactly the same name. Now this time I need a door style, that's good. I actually have a style, price, sure. All right, so now let's go a little bit differently here. Now let's uh, take on a Dulux range, for example. Maybe I'm gonna go pick on Dulux. Now, do you like something about a um, painted two-pack sort of a color? So I'm just making the necessary changes. Pardon my typing. Now I've gone with just that name this time because this particular material is probably based off the exact same stuff. In fact, probably here, I might actually drop that name because they're all going to be 18 in my opinion. It doesn't need edging. As a door that's painted, it does not need edging at all. I'm going to leave it looking slab. So it's a birch grey high gloss in the Dulux range. Now while I'm here, I'm also going to make another one.
deliberately leaving that the same because these two materials can be cut at the same raw material and painted later. So they're deliberately the same between the two different colors. Same look about them. Now, in this particular scenario, I'm not actually going to make a panel material because in this particular style, I don't actually make my panel. In fact, I'm actually going to turn off something. I don't actually see and see this particular material. So here I am just editing it. So I'm going to go back as well and I'm going to go edit that one because I've obviously forgotten that I didn't need to cut it. Although you could cut it. You could leave it as a cuttable material because you could cut the raw product. So you know what? Sure, I'll leave it on. Doesn't matter which way you go about these, you can keep changing these materials. They're completely up to you to make sure they're right for how you want them to work. Now I'm not going to make a panel material on this one because I am going to do panelist door because this particular project I'm thinking about, I am going to do painted doors with matching side panels that are pretending to be doors, this panelist door button. Um, I could still make myself a flat panel if I needed to. I've seen some people do it where they might just simply paint the edge of a uh, another board or edge a laminated board to do the task, but I'm just going to leave it alone at the moment and let you guys decide what you want to do with that. So I'm just going to press OK. So now coming back to my drawing, I'm just going to shift this aside so we can see some things changing. Now, if I come to my Formica colors, I'm going to go pick my Calm Gray, and I'm just going to leave it with 1mm edging. And in my panels, I'm going to come and find my Formicas, and I'm going to go find my Calm Gray matching. So the door and the panel, different material, but they are designed to come out at the same time. So when I apply, my drawing will pick up the change there. Even if I choose to go with the cappuccino color, they'll keep changing. Now those two materials will come out for machining purposes at exactly the same time, for exactly the same purpose. I'll prove it to you. I'll come to here and I'll press F8 with most machinists will do. And you can see that you've got carcass material and two sets of cappuccino material. Um, the two sets of cappuccino, one door, one shelf. Now, paneler's door. If I come into my Dulux color and I get my birch gray high gloss, you see the edging disappeared because I don't need it. It's not an edge material. Then I'm going to put my panel as door. Okay, so it's exactly what my door is doing. Now I'm going to make an adjustment to this drawing that I've done because that particular panel is not one of the ones I'm going to use for that purpose. I'm going to put that one down there. So now this panel is looking like a door. Now the painted is probably not the best example. Let's look at something a little bit different with these ones and go and look at the maybe a shaker style or something like that. So yeah, sure, I'll take the Ebonite high gloss uh, and I'll call it a shaker door. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for a square frame. I'm going to go with a glass pane. The infill is where you can actually add a lead lighting into the middle of that as a default choice. You can also do it as a drawing as a whole, but you can also set the material up to actually have a particular type of glass picture in the middle. But I'm just going to leave it as just the normal glass. In fact, I'll just tell it it's normal glass at all times. So that one's there, that one's fine, door style, square frame, yep, cool, save as, got another material, press OK. Press OK, I'm just going to go back to 3D, it's easier to do this in the one hit. I think my panel's back the other way, so I'll probably have to need to change that, yeah it is. So here you're looking at a door material and a panel as door. So surely it wouldn't have been glass, I'm just playing around. You can get the idea, you can put different styles on. But this is where the panel as door is appropriate. Uh, normally though there's a difference between a door material and a panel material. Alrighty, well that concludes our panel as door. Please stay tuned for some other materials videos. Thanks for watching.